Welcome to Oso Grande Wind Project, TEP's newly built wind farm located just outside of Roswell, New Mexico, more than six hours away from TEP's nearest technicians. The remote location of this project created a need for a visual surveillance system to monitor and survey the performance of TEP's wind turbines. Hi, my name is Tori Peterson. Hello, my name is Susanna Kahn. Hi, my name is Daniel Lansdowne. Hi, my name is Yulius Jakubowski. Hi, my name is Peter Vollmer. We are Team 21056, and our project is to design and build an autonomous rover we call Oso Pequeño. Our rover navigates wind farms on a pre-programmed route capturing video footage of wind turbines and surrounding meteorological data, as well as providing external software for post-processing video footage. The Oso Grande facility consists of 61 turbines that spread out over 24,000 acres. Due to this massive scope, budget constraints, and the early withdrawal of an electrical engineering team member, our team worked with our sponsor, Christopher Lin, to appropriately scale back the scope of our project while still providing a working prototype. The following requirements were developed by the team and approved by TEP, divided into four categories, performance, environment, design, and interface. Performance requires the rover to navigate along a route and come to a complete stop within 32 feet of all specified coordinates specifies a minimum accuracy for meteorological measurements including wind speed and direction, as well as a minimum accuracy for the provided analysis software. Environment requires the rover to stop if an obstacle is detected in its path. With the rover's components conforming to NEC 2018, NEMA 4, or IP66 outdoor water resistant and electrical ratings. Design requires the rover to be solar powered capable of three turbine inspections per week, to be noticeable from a distance, and at a cost not to exceed $4,000. And finally, interface requires data to be saved by the rover in a CSV file onto a USB flash drive for retrieval by a TEP employee. The rover design process was broken down into four subsystems, computer, body, electrical, and power. These are discussed in three main categories, software, electrical, and mechanical. All of the rover's functions, such as movement and data collection, are ultimately governed by the computer and the software running on it. This project uses a Raspberry Pi 4 as its computer. All software was written in Python using an object-oriented paradigm. The rover's behavior can be broken down into three states, idle, navigation, and recording. The rover starts in the idle state, wherein it charges its battery and keeps on a roughly weekly schedule between outings. Once enough time has passed, the rover checks environmental conditions as well as its battery charge with a voltage sensor and waits until conditions are suitable to transition to the navigation state. In the navigation state, the rover engages propulsion motors and follows a route of coordinates entered by the user. A GPS module measures the rover's coordinates, feeds the calculated error from the ideal trajectory into a PID controller, and the result is fed into a linear actuator to provide steering. The rover stops at designated waypoints and transitions into either the record state or back to the idle state at the end of a route. The rover will also stop if an obstacle is detected by the LiDAR distance sensor. In the recording state, the rover saves measurements from the weather meter kit and atmospheric sensor into a CSV file. This and footage from the wind turbine collected by the camera are stored on a USB flash drive for retrieval. The rover then transitions back to the navigation state. In addition to the rover's software, external desktop software is provided to aid in determining the rotational speed of wind turbine blades from footage collected by the rover. The user clicks on a point, and the software determines the time between turbine blades passing through that point and saves the result to a CSV file. Many electronics communicate to the computer using standard I2C, SPI, and UART protocols, though some intermediates were needed, such as a PWM generator to control steering and camera panning and tilting, as well as an analog to digital converter in order to obtain measurements from the weather station kit. To power the rover's propulsion, as well as all electronics, a 120 watt solar panel is wired through a solar charge controller to a 100 amp hour battery array. Now I'm sure you're all eager to see how all of this comes together mechanically. First and foremost, the 
frame of the Rover is that of an electric dirt quad ATV chosen for its size, steel frame, and off-road capabilities. There are seven sub-assemblies necessary to integrate all electrical components. First, two PVC NEMA 4 rated battery enclosures. Second, a steel plate to mount the LiDAR distance sensor. Third, a pair of L brackets to mount the camera and pan tilt assembly. Fourth, a steel bar mounting the linear actuator for automated steering. Fifth, a steel pipe sleeve to mount the weather station kit. Sixth, a steel NEMA 4 enclosure mounted on a pair of L brackets with added vibration isolation for an aluminum electronics plate. Seventh, a solar panel mounting kit to secure the solar panel in place. Each of these components and their integrations were thoroughly modeled by the team using SOLIDWORKS. Additionally, most exposed surfaces are covered with an elastomer polymer spray to prevent weathering, corrosion, and rusting of the rover. The first steps of the assembly process began in the TEP welding and fabrication shop, where mounts were created and welded for the linear actuator, electronics enclosure, LiDAR sensor, and weather station kit. Next. The remaining sub-assemblies were bolted to the upgraded body, with additional modifications continuously made. All sub-assemblies have successfully been mounted. The rover can be manually operated and will be fully autonomous. A variety of analyses were performed on our rover to verify our requirements and ensure the integrity, including the following. A center of gravity and lift analysis to account for tipping, a braking analysis to determine maximum speed, a mechanical stress analysis to prevent plastic deformation, a vibration analysis to protect the electronics, a solar analysis to adequately charge the batteries, a range analysis to determine the potential distance traveled, and a cost analysis, currently $300 under budget. Much of the rover's testing focuses heavily on its software components. The software programs have been dry run continuously throughout the coding process, and the subsystem software acceptance tests have been successfully passed. Consequently, the team also expects the results of the system level acceptance tests to pass. Given the large project scope, it was important to prioritize the software component testing to bring the, the rover to life. Testing was divided into system and subsystem level testing. The system level testing included operational analysis, waypoint acceptance, navigation, and obstacle detection. The subsystem testing included analysis, accuracy, power, and as a suggestion by the judges, a modified vibration acceptance test. Our rover has already fulfilled its requirements of recording turbines and meteorological data, post-processing footage for blade RPMs, exhibiting navigational operation, exhibiting sensor operation, demonstrating proper battery performance, and withstanding vibrations. The entire engineering senior design experience has been a stream of important lessons. As a team, we learned the importance of taking roadblocks in stride adhering to a set schedule and achievable milestones, utilizing our individual creativity and unique experiences to the advantage of the team, and engaging in consistent, direct communication important to teamwork and collaboration. We took these lessons to heart and in doing so created a product with revolutionary implications that is both exciting and outstanding. But we'll let you be the judge of that. Thank you and goodbye for now from Team 21056.